Greetings and salutations and welcome to another video about audio. This is take two on my video about my Audio-Technica AT3600L phono cartridge. Some of you may have already seen the earlier version that I posted. But I got to thinking about it and there were some things that I wanted to say that I had left out of that video and also I had a few slips of the tongue which means that I got something wrong. And if you get something wrong in a YouTube video, someone in the comments will just have to point out that you got something wrong. So we're going to try and avoid that. The Audio-Technica AT3600L phono cartridge is the least expensive magnetic phono cartridge available in the world today. We are looking at the LP Gear website and they're selling it for $24.95 but you can actually get it for much less and I will show you where a little bit later on in the video. I am using the LP Gear website because uh, they have the most accurate specifications. They are not paying me to mention their name however I can recommend them very highly because I am a very satisfied longtime customer of LP Gear. So a little backstory on this before we get into talking about the uh, nuts and bolts of the cartridge and what I think it sounds like. A couple of years ago I posted a video here on YouTube called the Budget Phono Cartridge Shootout 2018 or something like that in which I talked about a whole bunch of cartridges that cost $100 or less and at the end of the video I said the one that I liked the best for the way it sounded was the AT3600L and a lot of people said you must be insane it's the cheapest cartridge there is out there well I stood by that at the time because it sounded better than all the other stuff I had well I just had another go around with this cartridge after I did that video I put the one that I used for the review away and then I got rid of the turntable that I was using and went back to using my U-turn orbit turntable with the OA2 arm the OA2 arm will not accommodate the AT3600L's tracking force. You have to track this cart at 3 grams. That's what it's recommended. And that particular tone arm would not get it up to 3 grams. I think the closest I could get was like 2.6, which actually would have been okay. But I decided to go ahead and just put the cartridge away. And that particular cartridge got lost somewhere along the way. So I decided to reorder it, and I ordered it on the slow boat from China. This was about two months ago. It took about six weeks to get here, and I am just now getting into listening to this cartridge yet again, and it's even better this time around on my new Audio-Technica LPW40WN turntable with the carbon fiber tone arm, which is the reason why I wanted to give it a try because I thought it would mate really well with this turntable and it does it works beautifully Audio-Technica shipped this turntable with the uh, ATVM 95E which I don't think is a really good cartridge um, I've gone back and forth on those I think actually this would be a better cartridge to go along with that turntable and it does now the more recent video that I posted about audio was about the Nagalka uh, MP110 and that is a, a fantastic cartridge and I said in that video that if you didn't have hundred and thirty dollars to spend on it that you should sell something to get one I still say it's true the Nagalka is a unbelievable cartridge but the Audio-Technica cartridge gives it a run for its money and you can get it for a lot cheaper and it has some advantages uh, that I'll talk about later in the video uh, as we roll along here. So let's go ahead and get into the specifications. If you go looking on the web and you go look for specifications about the AT3600, you're going to find vastly different numbers depending on where you look. And that is because the AT3600 cartridge has been around for a long time and a big variety of styli have been manufactured for this particular cartridge. Some of them are good and some of them aren't. So you'll see where they'll say that the stereo separation is as little as 18 dB, uh, that the channel balance is 2 and 2.5 dB, depending on what you're looking at. These are the closest 
specifications to what I've seen to be real from the cartridge. A couple of years ago, V Westlife, a fellow YouTuber, posted a wonderful video in which he compared the Audio Technica AT3600L to the Riga Carbon cartridge. Essentially, the Riga Carbon is a rebadged AT3600L. The only difference is what they print on the front of the stylus. And he was able to figure that out by actually benchmarking the cartridge with a test record and doing real scientific measurements on it. And his measurements come up real close to what you see here. So they say that the output voltage is 4.2 millivolts. That's perfectly in line with what I'm getting. Uh, the frequency response is 20 to 20,000. They all say that. They don't give you any curve, so it doesn't tell you anything about the way the cartridge sounds. Channel balance is 1.5 dB. That's pretty tight. There's a lot of cartridges out there that list that at 2, and that's the difference in channels. And if you have one stereo channel that's 2 dB louder than the other, that's a significant difference. You're going to hear that. This cartridge, especially the example that I just got, is absolutely perfectly on balance. I could not hear any difference in the channels, and I looked at it on a set of meters playing a mono record and it pretty much is right where it needs to be so I'm very impressed with that channel separation now this is the one that varies the the most what they list here is 24 dB at 1 kilohertz and at 10 kilohertz it's 15 dB V Westlife found that this cartridge outperforms that it's usually about 26 or 27 so it does have an extraordinarily wide stereo image for a low-end magnetic cart. If you want to get that kind of stereo out of an Audio-Technica cartridges, uh, usually you would have to pay something in the uh, VM500 series because they're 28, 29 depending on the stylus. This gets pretty damn close. Tracking force. Now LP Gear curiously lists it as 2.5 to 3.5 grams. According to Audio-Technica themselves, it's between 3 and 4 grams with a recommended tracking force of 3 grams. This cartridge is the one that they put in their integrated tone arm that you find in a lot of plastic turntables, like the ATLP60 and then the later ATLP60X. So it's integrated with a little tone arm package. And they usually track those at 3.5 grams. They do have proper anti-skate in them. They will not hurt your records. You can buy an LP60 and play your albums and 45s all day. We'll get more into why that is later in the video. Because I know that there are people out there going to be squeamish and go, Ooh, you're tracking at 3 grams. You're going to damage your records. No, you're not. And uh, I'll explain why a little bit later on. One of the reasons I wanted to redo the video. So the stylus type is a highly polished and shaped 0.6 mil or 0 .0006 inch conical diamond, uh, which simply means that it is a spherical stylus shape, and it is very well made, and its compliance is set properly at 3 grams. You get very little sibilance out of this stylus, very little mistracking. I kept trying to hear it, and I couldn't. It's just not there. And then they say it's a bonded round shank. What they don't mention here is that it's a carbon fiber cantilever. And that is what it comes shift with. Now we are talking about the AT3600L. This is the latest version of this cartridge. Older versions had aluminum cantilevers. Then you have the ATR91, which is a different animal entirely and does not sound as good as this cartridge, even though it does use the same... 211 body style. That's what Audio Technica calls this cartridge, by the way. It's on a it's a 211 body style. They've been making it for many, many years. Um, now, specifications tell you so much. What do my ears tell me? It is light, bright, airy. It has great bass definition. It very punchy sound, extremely dynamic. The tracking is wonderful. It uh, will exhibit some sibilance on extremely highly modulated records. So if you have something where they've just blasted it or the record is damaged, you're going to hear it. But with a spherical stylus, you get a different sound uh, if you do get sibilance-type mistracking or high-frequency mistracking. And that is instead of a, 
a kind of a splatter. It's more of a, that's all it is. So you may be able to t detect that, oh, that might have mistracked a little bit, but it's not as annoying as if you have a really badly mistracking elliptical stylus. Uh, the sound is very wide, very accurate, and it's a bright cartridge. It has a lot of treble in it. It's unlike a lot of the cartridges of this price range, $100 or less, that either have a very demurred high end or they have a gritty high end or they have a rolled off high end. This one is loud and proud when it comes to that upper frequency detail. So if that's something you've been missing, you might want to check this out because the like I said, when you're talking about the Audio-Technica cartridges, you have to get into the VM530 series, and the lowest-end model there, the VM510C, or 500 series, I said, not 530 series, but the VM510C, which is currently retailing for about $109, is going to cost you, a, that's, it's much more than this, and you're going to get much better sound out of it. And I kind of like the fact that this one tracks at 3 grams because it, it just gives you a much more authoritative sound when you're playing back records and kind of just really hugs that groove and gives you that detail uh, that you might be missing with other cartridges. So if you want to play around with this thing, if you don't believe what I'm saying about it being a giant killer and sounding almost as good as cartridges that cost you know, you know, 10, 20 times more, uh, you can get it for an extremely low price and try it out for yourself. You can try uh, going on eBay, do a search for AT3600L, and you're going to see that you can buy them for $1249. Here's 1675 We go down a little bit here. Somebody's selling a stylus for $19. Let's see. Uh, there's a uh, Let's see, we might have been gotten out of the ones that were so inexpensive there. Twelve forty-nine. That's about the lowest we've seen so far. Um, you can buy these directly from China, and they take a while to get to you. They do not come with any kind of paperwork, so you have to know how to wire it up. Uh, it's the same pinout as every other Audio Technica cartridge, and you have to know that it tracks at three grams. Well, you're already armed with that information, and you can look up the pinout, so you don't need that. It also has with it a couple of little hex bolts and two tiny nuts, and that's it. That's all you get in the packaging. The hex bolts can be a bit of a pain if you don't have a miniature hex set. What I did with mine was grab a couple of little flathead screws and change that out simply because I had them, and that way it goes along with the other mounted cartridges I have. But you can take a flat-headed screwdriver of just the right size and kind of wedge it in there and get it tight enough where you can make it work if you have a little jeweler's screwdriver set you can do that or you can get a little hex set whatever uh, you can, you're going to be able to mount it up it's no big deal but that's something to be aware of for sure you can also buy these in bulk uh, if you're somebody who refurbishes turntables this would be an excellent choice to ship out with turntables it won't cost you a great deal of money and it sounds very good and getting replacement styli is going to be a breeze because this is probably the most common cartridge in the world and so getting the proper replacement styli for years and years to come should not be any kind of an issue at all so i want to talk a little bit about stylus shape and this is what i had forgotten to talk about in the first video that i wanted to add so people get freaked out when they hear that these cartridges track at three grams and they think oh that's going to damage my records no it will not let's go back to the early days of the lp the original vertical tracking force standard that was issued with lps in 1948 was six grams now that sounds like an awful lot and these days I would discourage you from using any turntable that tracked at six grams or over so that would include really cheap ceramic cartridges little Crosley garbage groove chewer type turntables if you play your records with six grams you're probably gonna damage them and that's all there is to it now the reason why is because when LPs were first introduced 
When they talked about tracking at 6 grams, it was a 1 mil spherical stylus. They don't make 1 mil styli anymore because it doesn't work well with stereo. Number two, the styli were only compliant laterally. In other words, they would move from side to side on the old mono records, but they weren't expected to be compliant in the vertical plane at all. Now the West Trax 4545 system, which takes the uh, left channel and puts it on the left hand groove wall and the right channel on the right hand groove wall as you look at the stylus tracking it like you're looking at the front of the cartridge, that means that there's going to be some vertical modulation because those are going to be different. As a matter of fact, if you drive 180 degrees out of phase audio into the cutter head, that's what you're going to get is pure vertical modulation. So a six uh, a cartridge tracking at six grams that doesn't have very good vertical um, compliance is going to tear up the grooves for sure. Fast forward a little bit to the late 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. and They changed the specifications just a little bit, and the main record players that you could buy in the late 60s, 70s, and through the 80s were these kind of all-in-one stereo systems with BSR changers on top of them. And a lot of those systems used ceramic cartridges from folks like Tetrad, Astatic, or uh, RCA. And these cartridges were designed to track at 4 grams and they had very good vertical compliance. So they would move laterally and uh, vertically with no issues whatsoever. Those styli with the 0.7 mil spherical styli styluses in them wouldn't hurt anything. They will not hurt your records. Uh, you can track at 4 grams with a 0.7 mil spherical stylus and it's not going to cause any major damage. You do have to make sure that you change your styli often but it won't hurt your records. They're designed for that. And uh, when they went to stereo they switched from 1 mil to 0.7. That's a finer point. So a lot of those records that you get today at the yard sale or if you're in England they call it a boot sale or the used record store or wherever that were played on those original systems if the person did not change the stylus often then it's going to have wear right about where a 0.7 mil stylus tracks now even a modern elliptical 0.7 mil stylus is going to track right there because the ellipticals are 0 0.7 po by 0 0.4 or 0 0.7 by 0 0.3. They kind of look like an American football with the long ends tracking the edges of the groove. The idea, of course, is that you get finer detail out of the groove and all that. With a 0 0.6 mil conical, which is what the AT3600 comes with, that is going to track a little bit lower. It's going to have better high frequency response than a 0.7 mil stylus. And the combination of those two things means that even on a loved record that somebody's played a lot on one of those old all-in-one systems, and maybe they didn't change their stylus, and maybe there's a little bit of wear on the record, you're not going to hear a lot of that damage because you're tracking below it, which is really nice, and it's wonderful for styrene 45s and that sort of thing. So as far as tracking force is concerned, um, there is some wonderful information out there. Some research was done in the mid-60s on record wear versus uh, stylus shape. And I actually have a video up with pictures and all that stuff that's been on this channel for quite some time. But let me recap that really quickly. So if you're looking at a conical stylus or a spherical, if it is a 0.7 mil, then you can safely track up to 4 grams without worrying about accelerating record wear. If it is a 0.6 mil stylus, then you cut that back to 3.5 grams. Really, between 3 and 4, you should be just fine. It's not that big of a deal. The Audio-Technica folks, with those integrated tone arms that have the AT3600 cartridges in them, those arms are set to track at 3.5 grams. And the anti-skate is also set properly on those arms. They will not hurt records as long as you keep those styluses changed. Not a problem. So then we talk about elliptical styli, and that depends on the degree of the ellipse. So if you have a very hyper-elliptical, which would be like 0.2 by 0.7,
let's say an old Shure M97XE, you really don't want to push that tracking force above like 1.75 grams because after that you're going to start having wear issues. For a 0.3 by 0.7 that's about 2 grams. A lot of the cartridges being sold today that is the tracking force at which they are being tracked and uh, I think it's actually getting pretty close to the excessive wear area. I feel a little bit more comfortable with a 0.3 by 0.7 tracking it a little lower if I can get away with it but you know we're splitting hairs here. Um, back in the 70s and 80s Stanton had a cartridge that was very popular in radio stations and it was the 680EL that came with a 0.4 by 0.7 stylus in it and its optimum tracking force was 3 grams and that cartridge sounded very very good and it had very little record wear that would probably be as far as you would push a mild elliptical like a 0.4 and a 0.7 to give you an example of cartridges that have that stylus shape today it would be something like the um, Ortofon OM5E and then there is also the Nagalka MP110 which we did a video about not too long ago 0.4 by 0.7 it's a nice compromise style of shape because it gives you some of the benefits of elliptical but then again it is close enough to being a spherical where it will not damage polystyrene 45s so no problem there and then of course here on our chart we're seeing that we have line contact and micro line these are all brand names for what we would call advanced stylus shapes. There's Vandenhall and Shibata and basically these have very sharp edges and the idea is that they will track the grooves retrieving a great deal of detail. These kinds of cartridges have to have very precise vertical tracking force settings, uh, stylus rake angle, um, everything. It's got to be like dead on perfect to get uh, the performance out of those styli that you can get out of them and if they are aligned wrong they can damage your records you've got to be very careful with especially microline and Vandenhall styli because if you if you not get it right it's actually going to just start gouging the walls of the records and uh, the grooves in the walls of the rec groove walls on the record that's what I was trying to say you knew what I meant and so I like to stick to simpler shapes and since I do have a, a very large collection of 45s, I'm a fan of 0.6 mil spherical styli because of the audio quality and also the care and feeding of the records to keep them uh, happy. One more thing about stylus tracking force I want to point out here because it's a myth, and that is that people will brag sometimes about, oh, I can track my cartridge at 1.2 grams when they're tracking something with a recommended tracking force higher than that and yes if you have a very well balanced tone arm and you're playing a lot of low modulation records you may be able to get way, get away with that without hearing any distortion but the truth of the matter is that under tracking the vertical tracking force can cause more damage to a record than over tracking as a matter of fact if you're going to be wrong try and err on the side of a little too much than a little too little because when you are not tracking with enough tracking force to keep that stylus in against those groove walls as it tracks through it when it leaves contact with that it's got to slam back into it and that's what gives you the really nasty hashy sound uh, very strong high frequency sibilant sounds lots of splatter and things like that that's where that's coming from that's that stylus leaving contact with the groove wall and then slamming back in and when it slams back in it does damage the forces that happen inside a record groove are measured in tons think about a lady on an airplane wearing stiletto heels you know it used to be years ago that if you had really fine stiletto heels they'd make you take them off if you were on an airplane that's because the aluminum floors the heel would go straight through because you're taking all the weight and putting it to a point well you're doing the same thing with a stylus that is moving sometimes at uh, 12 or 13,000 uh, cycles per second back and forth in a groove. And that's physical movement of a piece of rock. So it does develop a lot of inertia and potential energy. 
So uh, I have absolutely no trouble whatsoever playing my records with a cartridge with a spherical stylus that tracks at three grams. As a matter of fact, I think that that probably does less damage than some of the crappier lower end uh, 0.3 by 0.7 elliptical styli that people are playing their records with these days. And uh, I love the sound of this cartridge. It is amazing. It makes you stop and think about what you're actually spending money on when you buy a phono cartridge. <laughs> it's just, wow. Uh, yesterday, I was playing around with it, and I was listening to a lot of foo-foo pressings. I was listening to, like, the 30th anniversary of The Dark Side of the Moon, and I've got the 2005 Police Synchronicity German pressing. Uh, these albums, you know, really are begging to be played with moving coil cartridges costing in the thousands of dollars. Here I am playing that with a uh, 15 to $25 Audio-Technica AT3600L, and it was absolutely amazing. So thank you for watching the video. I look forward to your comments. We'll talk again soon.